Welcome to First Baptist Church of Raleigh's Journey to the Cross. This is a reflective worship experience that accentuates Jesus' life from Palm Sunday up to his death on the cross a week later, using the stories found in the Gospel of John. You are watching the video version of Journey to the Cross, which weaves together art, music, scripture, and questions that we hope are worth pondering. Before you begin, you may want to take a moment to relax, focus, and center yourself just like you would for any other worship. The video is about 35 minutes long and consists of seven scenes. Each scene focuses on a specific set of verses in John. You may want to follow along in your own Bible. There is also a booklet available for download on our website that has other activities and other questions following the same path. If you need time to juggle your Bible, the booklet, and the video, or if you want to consider a particular verse or question, feel free to pause the video and then continue at your own pace. The journey to the cross is a somber route. The path from celebration to betrayal, to torture, to death is hard for us to relive. Each year, however, we find ourselves returning to this part of the Jesus story, seeking to find meaning and power, grace and inspiration, empathy and understanding in the sacrifice Christ made. We hope that this video helps you as you strive to worship, to contemplate, and to grow. Also, please join us online this Sunday as the journey continues with the hope and joy of Easter. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. John chapter 12, verse 12. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. John 12, 13. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, John 12:14. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. John 12, 15.
His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. John 12, 16. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. John 12, 17. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. John 12:18. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. John 12, 19. Jesus knew that he had come from God and would go back to God. He also knew that the Father had given him complete power. So during the meal, Jesus got up, removed his outer garment, and wrapped a towel around his waist. John 13, 3-4 He put some water into a large bowl. Then he began washing his disciples' feet and drying them with the towel he was wearing. John 13:5. When he came to Simon Peter, that disciple asked, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You don't really know what I am doing, but later you will understand. John 13, 6-7 
You will never wash my feet, Peter replied. If I don't wash your feet, Jesus told him, you don't really belong to me. John 13, 8. You call me your teacher and Lord, and you should, because that is what I am. And if your Lord and teacher has washed your feet, you should do the same for each other. John 13, 13 through 14. I have set the example and you should do for each other exactly what I have done for you. John 13:15. I tell you for certain that servants are not greater than their master, and messengers are not greater than the one who sent them. John chapter 13 verse 16. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. You know Him, because He abides with you, and He will be in you. John fourteen seventeen. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. John 14:18. On that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. John 14:20. The other Judas, not Judas Iscariot, then spoke up and asked, "Lord, 
What do you mean by saying that you will show us what you are like, but you will not show the people of this world? John 14, 22. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. John 14:26. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. John 17, 20-21 The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. John 17, 22. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. John 17, 23.
Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. John seventeen twenty four. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. That disciple knew the high priest, and he followed Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest's house. Peter stayed outside near the gate. John 18, verses 15 through 16a. The girl asked him, Aren't you one of the man's followers? No, I am not, Peter answered. John 18, 17. It was cold and the servant and the temple police had made a charcoal fire. They were warming themselves around it when Peter went over and stood near the fire to warm himself. John 18-18. While Simon Peter was standing there warming himself, someone asked him, Aren't you one of Jesus' followers? Again, Peter denied it and said, No, I am not. John 18, 25. One of the high priest's servants was there. He was a relative of the servant whose ear Peter had cut off, and he asked, Didn't I see you in the garden with that man? John 18-26 Once more Peter denied it and right then a rooster crowed. John 18-27 
Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. John 19.1 The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe. John 19.2 They came up to him and said, Hey, you, King of the Jews! They also hit him with their fists. John 19, 3. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. John 19.4 When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. John 19, 5 When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. John chapter 19 verse 6 The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. John 19.7 
carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. John 19, 17. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. John 19, 18. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. John 19, 19. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. John 19, 23 and 24a. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. John 19, 25. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. John 19, verse 26 and 27. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. John 19, verse 29. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. John 19, 30. 